A few months ago, I made a YouTube video on 5 things you should do before coming to the United States. But then later, I got to thinking and realized that is not the end of the journey. And what would you do after coming to the United States? So here we are. These are the 5 things you should do after you land in the United States. So let's get started. Now before I dive into the video itself, all the links that I'll be mentioning throughout the course of this video are listed down in the description so that you can access them whenever you want. And with now that out of the way, let's talk about the first thing you should do and that is opening a bank account. Now when you come to the US for the first time, you will be having a forex card with you to make this initial first few transactions. But you can't rely on this forex card for too long because you can't use this in making online transactions and neither can you add this to your apple pay or google pay wallet which is a popular form of making transactions here in the us so your first line of action should be opening a bank account more specifically a checkings account now there are two types of accounts here in the us one is a savings account which is literally used for savings and the second one is a checkings account which is the one you should be opening and it is used in making day-to-day -day transactions now the next question that arises is which banks to trust now i personally use bank of america and have faced no problems with them but from the experiences that my friends have had i would or can also recommend using wells fargo and chase but if you just ask me then i would only go for bank of america or wells fargo because they have this service called as zelle integrated within their apps and basically this helps you transfer money from your account to your friend's account so if your friend buys something for you and you have to pay him back you can just sell him the money and i have been using this a lot lately and it comes in very handy so i guess just go for bank of america or wells fargo because they have this service integrated within their apps which makes it even safer to use and if you want to open a us bank account even before you come to the us there's a way of doing this now i came across this fintech company called as eldera before i was supposed to come over here which helps you open a us bank account with your indian passport however i was not 18 at the time of coming and you need to be 18 in order to open a bank account so i was not able to do it but i wouldn't honestly go this route because there are just a lot more benefits of opening a bank account over here and it's much more safer but if you want to take the route it is available and link down in the description below moving on to number two get a phone plan now when you first come to the united states you might have international roaming activated on your indian sim but that is not gonna last forever so you need to get a us phone plan as soon as possible now first you need to understand how the us phone plans work and the first question that obviously will arise is what carriers to choose now i would recommend going for verizon at&t t-mobile or mint mobile however take note that verizon and at&t are more expensive so make your choices wisely now how does the us phone plan system work in general to put it in the most simple terms the more number of lines you will have under a phone plan the cheaper the bill will be for you so to give you an example if you have a phone plan and you are the only line under it you can expect to pay 60 dollars per month however say your friend joins you with another line in your phone plan then the price will go down and each one of you will now be paying 25 dollars per month which comes to a total of 50 dollars per month for the phone plan so you get the idea the more number of people who will join you on that phone plan the cheaper the bill will be for each individual in that phone plan now if you want to go for a phone plan with unlimited data go for t-mobile because i feel they have a cheaper uh, rate and you will need to save that extra bucks but i've also heard that verizon has some student discounts so check that out before you make a decision however if you want to go with a phone plan which has limited data go for mint mobile because i feel they give some really good deals out there and to be honest you won't be even requiring a lot of data because you will be on college campuses which offers free wi-fi so make your choices wisely but if you think that you require unlimited data later on, say after a few months, then you can upgrade it. So make the choice wisely, take your time. And yeah, that will be my recommendation when it comes to phone plans. Number three, get a state ID. Now the first question that you will have for me is what is a state ID? So basically a state ID is a document which verifies that you are a legal resident of the state and it also serves as a government issued ID for verification in other places. Now, why is it that important? 
So basically, when you come to the United States and international student for the first time, the only government issued ID that they will consider is your passport. And it is impractical to carry your passport everywhere because it's just not safe. So you need to have some sort of government issued identity card so that you can verify your identity in the United States. And that is what the very purpose of state ID is. So say you go to the Apple store to pick up an order that you have placed. They won't give it to you because they want to see a government issued identity to confirm that you are the person who placed the order. Or say you're 21 years of age and you want to go to a club that's 21 and above or you want to buy alcohol for that matter then they need to see a government issued identity to confirm your age and even if you're traveling domestically within the united states you need a government issued identity so instead of carrying your passport everywhere you go which is very very unsafe just get a state id much more safer much more easier to get and yeah just does the job now let's talk about number four and that is getting a credit card now this shouldn't be a priority like most of the other things in the list but this is something that you should consider in the long run and i'll tell you why so credit card is a very important financial tool here in the us unlike in india where it is looked down upon because it helps you build your credit score and why is the credit score so important so basically down in the future when you want to buy a car or a house and you go to a bank and ask them for a loan they will look at your credit score and use it to determine to see if you're a good person to lend money to or not so if you use your credit card aimlessly and don't pay your bills on time your credit score will just go downhill however if you use a credit card wisely and make your bill payments on time then your credit score will just become more healthier and increase over a period of time now that you understand how credit cards work and how they impact your credit score what are the ones that are available to you and the first one that i would recommend is this credit card from solve now a few benefits that come with this credit card are that you get a high credit limit you have no international transaction fees and also you get very good cashback offers up to five percent now there are a bunch of other benefits that come with this credit card and i can't list them all over here so there is a referral link down in the description below which will tell you more about the credit card and if you decide to sign up and get the card you will get a 50 dollar cashback on your first credit card bill now, if you don't trust yourself with the high credit limit, then you can go for a second option that is this credit card from Deserve. Now, this doesn't have a very high credit limit, but it gives you decent benefits such as 1% cash back on all transactions. You get a phone protection plan and a free one year Amazon Prime subscription. Now, this is very decent in my opinion. And again, both of these don't need an SSN, so you should go for it. And if you want to get the Deserve one, there is a $30 referral link down in the description below again for your use. So, yeah go and get it if you need it and finally number five set up your amazon prime student account now this might sound pretty lame but amazon is going to be your best friend for the first few months you will be here in the us because everything that you will need for a new dorm or your apartment right from laundry detergent to dry sheets or even a new laptop can come from amazon at the cheapest prices and they also ship it real quick now, if you didn't know this already, you get six months of free Amazon Prime along with your school email. So make sure you sign up for that using it. And also, if you use the referral link down in the description below, you will get a $5 credit on your student ID or in your student account. And one thing to remember is that at the end of the six months, it will automatically charge your card to renew for your Prime membership. So make sure you cancel that like by putting a reminder somewhere in your phone so that you are not charged unless, of course, you want the subscription. But of course, make use of the resources that you get as a student and everything is good when it's free. So yeah, make use of it. Hi yeah, guys, that's all I had in this YouTube video. Now, if you gained any value from this, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more such further videos. And thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.